Herman J. Marino, uh, April 7, 1925. I was uh, always uh, wanting to go somewhere, do things, and uh, and uh, the Marine Corps just seemed to hit me the, <laughs> the right way, so I, I wanted to go in the Marine Corps. Well, I played hooky from school one day and then went down and enlisted. Really? Yeah, I was 16. That's simple. <laughs> and, uh, well, I had to wait to my 17th birthday, so I went in on my 17th birthday. So after uh, 12 weeks, I think it was 12 weeks of boot camp, and they gave us a couple days leave, and then I went to Quantico, Virginia, communication school. And uh, well, I was there uh, about three months uh, during the summer of '42, uh, and uh, around uh, October, I guess it was, uh, uh, we went down to uh, Camp Lejeune and. Uh, we formed the uh, third part of the Third Marine Division. Then, about the uh, uh, first part of November in '43 or '42, we got on a train and went to Brawley, California, and uh, we set up camp there. That was right across the border from Yuma, Arizona, and we trained in the in the desert for well uh, from uh, November until. Uh, February when we went overseas and we trained there and uh, and at first we thought we were going to Africa because uh, we were training in the desert all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then uh, and uh, the middle of February they uh, we get a convoy and we go to San Diego and we got on a ship. And normally uh, you go overseas it's a convoy. We were one ship. That was. Uh, and they converted this uh, uh, luxury liner into a troop ship. It was yeah. a, the lure line that they uh, used to go between San Francisco and Hawaii. And they converted that into a troop ship and we went over by ourselves. And uh, when we got near Wake Island, which was uh, held by the Japs at that time, they had to cut all the motors and, and drift all night long so the Japs wouldn't pick up uh, our motors on the on the sonar. So, and, but uh, we made it to New Zealand in 14 days without any incident. So, right. so we were there in New Zealand till I'd say around July. I don't know exactly. And we went to Guadalcanal. In Guadalcanal, there were snipers there yet, and uh, we had to be careful with those. And uh, <clears throat> and then uh, we were more or less a working party. Uh, from uh, 6 to 12 every day, we would unload ship. We combined the, uh, the working parties with our training. And uh, so then uh, we went uh, to Bougainville. We were there from, uh, I think, November the 15th until January the 14th or something like that. So we were, we were there for a couple months. And then we went back to Guadalcanal and trained again, getting ready for Guam. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in June, we left for Guam, and when we get near Guam, the, in the meantime, they they invaded Saipan, and they were running into problems. So they held us back in reserve in case the troops on Gua, Saipan needed us. So we rode around for 42 days on that ship, waiting to get the word to go in uh, attack Guam, and uh, but they would take us off the ship every once a week and we'd exercise and everything to keep our legs in shape and uh, and uh, then, w then we hit Guam and and uh, that was pretty much our base after that. We, we secured Guam and uh, and built it up uh, with a, a nice base and we stayed there until February when we went to Iwo Jima. <coughs> we were held in reserve in Iwo Jima also. Okay. And uh, the third and fourth division, or the fourth and fifth division were not my, up Mount Sarabachi. And uh, about the third day, we saw the flag go up. And we figured, well, it was all over. But then uh, a couple of hours later, the Japs hit the ammunition depot. And we didn't know it, but we had ammunition on our, our ship. So at night, they put all the lights on the ship. And we had to unload ammunition. And so the next day, we went in and uh, uh, they had uh, Mount Suribachi pretty well secured, so we took the airport, and then we pretty much guarded the airport for the because Iwo Jima was all uh, caves underneath. Uh, there were no barracks above ground. 
they they had everything in caves. The whole island was a cave, and uh, they had everything in there except water. They had to come up for water, and that's when we would get them. So, but, uh, but we never had too many problems with them because we were guarding the airport, and I guess they didn't want to come too close to uh, the airport there because we had a lot of guards there. And so, if you had a friend that uh, came from your area, then you you. But other than that, uh, you didn't make too many friends, and because uh, uh, you don't know when one of them is going to go. And uh, that, uh, I made uh, an acquaintance with one guy, and uh, he got killed on Guam, and another guy he got killed on the invasion of Bougainville. So uh, uh, I really uh, wasn't that kind of friendly. I was friendly enough, but I didn't make close friends with anyone. So. Uh, after we came back from Iwo Jima, they come out with the program. If you had 85 points, you you, you were going back to the states. So I had 85 points, and uh, they uh, scheduled the time that we were coming back. But uh, they didn't tell us how we were coming back. They, we were uh, <coughs> we had six uh, LSTs to run fit for combat duty, and they put us on those six LSTs. And it took us 30 days to come back to the States. So, really? Yeah. But that, that was quite a, a trip. I mean, uh, we ran into storms and everything. You know, LSC had a flat bottom. And uh, you go up and that they would hit that flat bottom on the waves. And the ship was... <laughs> I'm probably going to get much sleep or... No. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, uh, it, was, it was all a, an education. So when I got out, I went back to Pennsylvania. And, uh, my brother-in-law was a ceramic engineer in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and he just built a brick plant, so I went to work for him in a brick plant. He didn't plan anything. He did. I was uh, kind of a, a lost soul, a rover, you know. I, I was never satisfied where I was at, and I wanted to go to see what was at the next place, and uh, yeah. so it, uh, it was a good experience. So.